mentioned the Keystone Opportunities Zone when we were talking about mm -hmm. Main Street. Right. How did you vote when commissioners last year blanket approved uh, 21 Keystone Opportunity Zone extensions for Lockhart County? I'm, I'm 100, maybe I should, I should rephrase. I'm 1,000% for Keystone Opportunity Zones. Critically important. Vote for them all the time. I think blanket approvals is the way to go. Um, because it's one more tool in our economic development arsenal. But what we do is we cross our fingers and hope people come into the region and go into them. I mean, you know, when companies call us, what do they say? First thing, first thing out of their mouths, first thing they say is, do you have KOZs? Okay, can you get us a map of the, your KOZ space? First question. Okay, yes, okay, they'll, they'll ask question number two. What's the second one? What's your educational levels there? Can you give us a graph with all your educational, you know, demographics? Sure. Then they make their decision. I mean, it's that simple. Simple. That's the way that they, they operate. So the, first they need that. If they don't have that, then they go to New York and New Jersey where they have that, or they go to a different part of the state where they have it. And if you don't have the specific one that they need, they just go somewhere else. I mean, they, they don't, you know, if they're going to be in a tax-free zone, they kind of don't care as long as they're geographically in the geographic region, not necessarily in our state, but just in the region that they want to be in, they're okay. So we need it because other people have it. So it's just, if we don't have it, then it's one less tool in the arsenal. And we need all the tools we can, we can have. So I'm a strong supporter of it. Corey, getting back to the, uh, the issue of Carney and the uh, appropriations committee, mm -hmm. what's worse, Car uh, Kondrowski not supporting him or Kondrowski with 26 years in the Congress not being able to tell whoever was dictating to him, no, I want this guy, which, which is the worst scenario? Well, f first is the vote, because he didn't even get to that point. He didn't get to that point. Uh, because remember what he, what he was saying, well, well, we need to put somebody out there who is going to garner the approval of the steering committee. Well, so that's the next step. The first step is making the right decision there. This is the biggest issue in the race. I don't know how to capture it necessarily yet. This is absolutely the most important issue in the race. Forget everything else. This appropriation seat and hundreds of millions of dollars not coming to this area. This, over the long term, over the next 30 years, will prove to be the most important and biggest mistake made here in the next 20 to 30 years. There's no question about it. We don't have one. We had, at one point, we had Dan Flood and Joe McDade, both on appropriations. You see what they did. Anything that you want to say kind of on the, on the negative side of, of them, look at the positives. That airport is a, is a fantastic airport. It's here because of Joe McDade. Other people can take credit for it, but that's why it's here. My opponent could take credit for it, but Joe McDay got it here. There's a reason why his name's on it. It's because he got it. He brought it here. 81. What has 81 meant to our region? What has 80 meant to our region? It's created the economic development that's here. It, it provides only the second corridor to New, New England. 95 or 81. Dan Flood sat on appropriations and said, we're going to bend this road a little bit. And he bent it. And it's meant everything to our region. Just imagine what Chris Carney could have Done. Dan Flood sat in a meeting and just said, let's just bend it this way. Off the cuff, one day in a committee meeting. That's how it started. Imagine what Chris Carney could have done. My opponent shares two counties with him, the two most populous counties in the region. The bedrock of our economic development in northeastern Pennsylvania shares two counties against him. So that's the first thing. That was the most critical issue. Now, he talks about being the dean of the delegation. He talks about a seniority. Well, certainly, if you're the 39th most senior member of the United States Congress, you can go to the other 38. And Nancy Pelosi, who is not as senior as you are, by the way, she came two years after my opponent in the Congress, you could go to people less senior than you and say, need your help here. You know, if seniority matters, then can't you do that? Can't you, you, can't, you, can't, you can't keep an appropriation seat in Pennsylvania? Come on. I mean, that seems like an easier one than creating 100,000 new jobs. That seems easier to me. You know, if seniority is all that it is, then that seems like an easy one. If leadership and seniority is all that it is, then he could have called for a hearing like Chuck Schumer did with respect to Buy America. If seniority is all that it's cracked up to be, you know, um, he would have brought in more money than Chris Carney in 2010. Now, my opponent says, well, look at the 2010 earmarks, right? Look at the 2010 earmarks. He's the 39th most senior member of Congress. Chris Carney's the 324th most senior member. 324. You have in your packet, I think. Do they have in their packet? You have in the packet the page. 
I mean, I'm not making this up. This, th you can't make this up. Nobody would believe it if you made it up. You can't make it up. It's right there. I mean, I didn't make that chart, you know? Look at the chart. I mean, he's, he's 324, he's, three, he's 39. Chris Carney brought home $17.8 million. 2010, federal earmarks. This is not ready to go projects. My opponent says, well, that's ready to go projects, stimulus, all this stuff. No, not true. This is direct federal earmarks. Different, he knows it's different. F federal earmark, I want $500,000 for X. It's not ready to go, it's an earmark. You know, after 26 years, he, he doesn't know what's ready to go in the district? Even if it were ready to go? He doesn't know what's ready to go? He can't get at least $17.8 million? He brought in $16.3 million last year in federal earmarks. Now he'll say over his career he brought in $800 million in investment, which is the job of your congressman. He'll, he'll make up some number that's large, right? But when we need it the most, when we need it right now, our latest data, Chris Carney has just simply done more. There are those people who would say, and Prashant mentioned this earlier, about the need for reform. Some people are opposed to the earmark system entirely. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. On worthwhile, important projects for our region, absolutely not opposed to the earmark system. As long as it's done in an open and transparent way, people understand and know what earmarks you're, you're going for, uh, then I think, I, I'm for them. I don't think we, we should be pigs about this. I think we did, but we do deserve our fair share of federal tax dollars and we need them for worthwhile projects. I think the Commonwealth Medical College is a worthwhile project. I can go on. What constitutes open and transparent? How do we... The disclosure, I mean, there, there is significant disclosure in earmarks now. I mean, every earmark that a member of Congress seeks is online. You can see that. There's this website, taxpayer.org. I think it's taxpayer.org, which lists all the earmarks, the total dollar amounts. But they list every project you know, that, that a member goes. So, so there is an open and transparent system now.